Planer. Your host for Motor Week, John Davis. Well, hello and welcome again to Motor Week. We're glad to have you with us. Auto enthusiasts are by their very nature an impatient breed. No sooner does an exciting new model hit the streets than they're anxiously looking ahead to its successor. But the car most of them are looking forward to this year is the all-new Porsche 911. First built in 1964, the rear-engined, air-cooled 911 has outlived every challenger to come down the Autobahn. But even an icon like the 911 must eventually step aside, and in this case, make room for the first liquid-cooled 911. It took company engineers 34 years to replace Dr. Porsche's original formula. Let's see how well it goes down. Of all the medicines that we must take in our lives, change is sometimes the most difficult to swallow. Though throughout the Porsche 911's 34-year existence, that change has been evolutionary and therefore easier to take until now. The 1999 version of the Porsche 911, known internally as the 996, is still a rear-engined, rear-drive, high-performance sports car. But it's also the most radical departure yet from Ferdinand Porsche's original concept. Unlike the pudgy, bug-like 911 of old, the longer, wider 996 looks low, sleek, and refined, with all the old car's steroid-like curves and bulges now flowing along more generic, wind-tunnel-induced lines. But the Porsche family look is preserved in the stylish front end and lamp housings, which are largely shared with its less expensive stablemate, the Boxster, and the retractable rear spoiler, which deploys automatically at speeds above 75 miles per hour. The new look carries over into a thoroughly modern interior, which finally sheds the last vestiges of 1960s ergonomics. And with the addition of standard side airbags, 1960s safety standards as well. The dash is as smooth as any Toyota's, but still retains a distinctly European character, with its ignition switch still located to the left of the steering column. And the familiar analog gauge is now tightly clustered and overlapped a la the Boxster. The cabin is also expanded slightly in all directions, and the seats sport more modern power adjustments. That's not to say that the cabin is now large, but it's definitely not as claustrophobic as it once was. Even the traditionally unusable rear seats are roomier, though we still found it best to simply fold them and more easily reach the expanded rear luggage nook. There may be more room in the cockpit, but the engine bay is as tight as ever and now carries the biggest departure from the original 911 design. The 996's 3.4-liter flat-six engine is water-cooled, a first in 911 history. It's also more powerful, cranking out 296 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. Transmissions are a standard Getrag six-speed manual that's now cable actuated, or an optional ZF-built five-speed Tiptronic automatic with fingertip steering wheel shift control. Other significant drivetrain changes include the addition of a dual-mass flywheel, Porsche's VarioCam variable valve timing system, and automatic brake differential traction control, which all together allows a manual 911 to reach 60 in 5.2 seconds, while the automatic does it in a solid six even. The all-aluminum suspension still uses McPherson struts up front and Porsche's own five-link Wysock variable tow control design in the rear, while 17-inch alloy wheels remain as standard with 18-inch hoops an option. We took our first drive in the latest 911 at the official press introduction along the twisting back roads and high-speed autobahns of its native land and found it to be a very different car from its predecessor. The traditional 911 tail wag, already reduced in the last few years, is now almost completely gone. Weight is now biased more towards the front, with noticeable front-end push replacing the old car's propensity to step out at the rear. And when it does, a burp of the throttle brings it back in line. The ride, while still Porsche firm, is now much more supple while 45% more structural rigidity and better aerodynamics have substantially reduced noise levels at high speed. We predict that those folks who were always intimidated by the 911's character in the past will love the changes, but we also expect some 911 traditionalists to decry the emasculation of their favorite hairy-chested sports car. Both groups, however, will praise Porsche for holding the line on prices. Despite the all-new design, the 1999 U.S. market 911 Carrera Coupe carries a base price of $65,030, an increase of only $1,280.
No matter how you look at the new Porsche 911, whether from the standpoint of performance, design, or marketing, it's an impressive performer. One that moved Automobile Magazine to state that there has never been a more complete 911 than the new 996. It's that simple. As for us, we were so enthralled that the new 911 was the hands-down winner of MotorWeek's 1998 Driver's Choice Award for Best Sports Car. After 34 years of gradual change, the Porsche 911 has suddenly taken a big evolutionary jump and transformed into a machine that neither its creator or many of its longtime devotees could ever have expected, but one we think arrived with perfect timing. Coming up.